Information calls them the Illini Invitational. Second half, Channing Fry open for three. Illini down 15 with four minutes to go. Wildcats the first team to give Illinois a double-digit deficit this year. Under a minute and a half to go. Luther had the steal and the finish. Illini with 25 points off 17 Arizona turnovers. They're back within seven. Minute to go. Head for three. They're within five. Luther had had 20. Ensuing possession. Look what ensues. D. Brown knocks it away. He had 15, and Illinois suddenly is within three. It's a one possession game. Arizona will inbound. And there's the steal. Illini can tie it. Williams open for three. And the tie. 80 apiece. It's a 17 3 Illini run. Arizona can still win it. Juwan McClellan, no. Salim Stoudemire. He comes up with it. Block to Son Adams. Desperation. And we go to overtime. Remember, Illinois was down 15 with four minutes left. And now they're in overtime. End of the game. That's head. He wants a timeout. Doesn't get the TO, but still stays in the game. Keep your head in the game. He comes over and makes the block on Stoudemire. That's a heads up play. Let's go to overtime. In OT. First Illini possession. Williams for three. Deep three, he had 22. It's a 20 to three Illini run. They're up three. Under a minute to go, Arizona down three. Stoudemire, no. Adams gets the rebound. Two of his 21, and the Wildcats are down one. Here's the ball game. Last chance, they can win it. Still down one. Adams just can't execute the play that Lou Olson wanted, and Illinois comes back and wins in overtime. Unbelievable. Illinois now 36-1, the fighting Illini overcoming their biggest deficit of the season. They are into the first Final Four since 89. Channing Fry was immense in the loss for Arizona. 24 points, 12 rebounds, 6 blocks. But what killed the Cats was Salim Stoudemire. Only 9 points, 2 of 13 shooting, just 1 of 7 from 3-point range. Down 15 with 4 minutes left. Illinois finds a way. The Illini into the Final Four. This game was played at a high level with unbelievable passion and and intensity and uh, you know we had our we had our chances and we didn't we didn't close them off but um, on the other hand they had their chances and hit big time shots it was just an off night on my part uh, I didn't knock the shots down but I didn't quit you know I, I tried to do other things on the floor and uh, you know it just so happens that we came up short a couple times I told him look in my eyes and don't, you know, don't, you know, we're not going down. We've, we've fought too hard. We've come too far. You've done the conditioning, the weights. I said, guys, we, we you know, I, they said, I, I said, we're not going to quit. Me personally, I, I never panicked. I felt that we had a chance. You know what I mean? Them guys don't give us a chance to get back in the game. And uh, our defense is going to pick up. We was going to get a few stops. And with the crowd here we had behind us um, and the guys we have up here who made big plays, um, we figured we had a chance. The coach told us, you know, go down fighting. You know, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down fighting and still playing hard. You know, you know, we, we, we did that and we're able to, like I said, get momentum because of the crowd and, um, you know, we're able to take over the game. Arizona senior Salim Stoudemire and Channing Fry did not want to go out like this. They blew huge leads in each of their last two NCAA tournament losses in 2004. They had a 14 point lead in the second half to Seton Hall as well. Neil Everett has more. All right, Steve Lavin joins us. Arizona down one, about 12 seconds left. They've got the basketball. What happened on that last possession? Well, coming out of the timeout, Lou Olson had a play designed. It was a 1-4 setup where there was an option for Channy Fry down on the block, their postman, and also a dribble handoff option for Sleem Stoudemire coming behind the ball. But they waited too long for the play to develop. And as a result, with smothering defense by Darren Williams on the ball, Hassan Adams instead ends up way out on the floor, too far from the basket, cannot operate, and launches a rock off the glass. Ideally, what you want in this situation under pressure conditions is either Channy Fry, your 6'10 center, or Salim Stoudemire, your go-to guy all night long to take the final shot and hopefully take it with enough time where you have a chance for an offensive rebound put back to win the game. Did not happen. Yeah, you're two seniors. You want to want to give them the shot to go out. Hey, did Arizona give this game away or did Illinois take this game away? I'd say a combination of both. Uh, clearly, Arizona down the stretch did not handle the time and score situation well, did not get deep into shot clock possessions, did not get themselves to the foul line, took some questionable shots, had multiple turnovers, but give the opportunistic Illini credit for scrambling back, hitting big shots, getting on the glass, executing precisely to get into overtime, and then executing in overtime as well. Okay, with what Illinois did Saturday, how much momentum 
to the Fighting Illini have going into the Final Four? Well, it's been a storybook season for the Fighting Illini, and the story continues. Uh, a magic level type of season and performance. It seems as though they are a team of destiny. Uh, recently, the team really banding together with the death of Coach Weber's mother. Uh, her passing seems to even brought this team together close, closer, very resourceful, resilient group, great cohesiveness, great chemistry, and a team capable of cutting down the nets in St. Louis. Just an old school team in terms of unselfishness. All right, Steve Lavin, nothing but net. Thanks, Coach. Illinois just the sixth team since seeding began in 79 to enter the Final Four with one or fewer losses on the season. However, none of those teams won the national championship and only two even won their next game. First Final Four trip since 1959 when Jerry West was their star player, but WVU jumped ahead 19 to five and got pit snoggled in the first half. Louisville did up 20 at one point, took a 13 point lead to the locker room after making 10 threes in the first half. Rick Pitino's halftime speech stuck though. Larry O'Bannon with the old fashioned three, it's a seven point game. Louisville's Francisco Garcia, he keeps it close, goes wind vex. But his night ends after that bucket. Garcia picks up his fifth foul with four minutes left, so he needed his mates to pick him up. O'Bannon did just that. He drives and he puts it up. This game is tied! Final 14 seconds. West Virginia hit 18 threes. All they need is two here. J.D. Collins. Blocked by Brandon Jenkins. Talk to the hand. Louisville looking for its ticket to St. Louis. Passage denied for now at least. Overtime in the final five, it would be Louisville going to the final four. Dean with Garcia looking on. Dean for three. The Mountaineers went 0 for three from distance in overtime. Louisville turned it over just four times in the second half in overtime combined. Down 20 early, winners by eight. Late 93-85, Louisville's first Final Four appearance since 86. O'Bannon leads away with 24 points, all coming in the second half and OT. Eighth Final Four appearance in school history. West Virginia got killed on the boards, out-rebounded 34 to 19. Coach Patino becomes the first head coach to lead three different schools to the Final Four. We went up the ramp at halftime and I told the guys, I said, to be down 13, to give up 10 threes and see a team that hot, I said, that, that's the best thing I've seen since I've been a coach. And um, I've been involved in some incredible comebacks. Incredible. None ever so satisfying and as big as this one. Coach gave us a blueprint on how to win a game, and one of them was rebounding. But I've never seen a, a, a team that could shoot better than us. And uh, <laughs> they definitely could uh, shoot the ball. But we knew it was going to come down to uh, key possessions and getting rebounds and challenging shots, and we did that. We just say, I mean, this is the last game. I mean, we got to give it all out. I mean, we can't go to the zone anymore. We got to play man, straight man the whole time. That's what we did. I mean, I thought we had a good chance to win the whole game, even when, even when they were in. But uh, they were two great athletes, and when they started going down, we, we thought we had a little better chance. But, uh, I mean, they deserved the win. They played terrific. Both Elite Eight winners Saturday overcame huge deficit. Louisville trailed by 20 with two minutes left in the first half, ended regulation on a 16-6 run to force OT. Illinois trailed by 15 with just four minutes left, 17-3 run force OT. Both those who came from behind came out ahead. Coaching's elite on hand. Tom Izzo against Tubby Smith. Spartan seeking their sixth Final Four trip. Late second half. MSU up six. Kelvin Torbert. The who? The incredible reverse. MSU up eight. Just over a minute left. Kentucky down four. Kalina Azabuki. The big three cuts it to one. Under 30 seconds to go. Ramel Bradley Sorry. going for the high pass. Collides hard with Allen Anderson. Bradley down. Hit his head hard on the floor. Now, since Bradley was fouled on the play, Patrick Sparks comes off the bench to shoot his free throw. Sparks a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he misses it. Score remains 73-72. UK down three. Inbounding the ball with 12.6 to go. Check this out. 11, 10, 9, Sparks, head of the key, three, short. Azubuki the rebound with five. Three from the right corner. No good. Two seconds. Sparks to tie. It is it it. It rolled all over. And it fell in. And we're going to overtime. Oh, my gosh. Even the Kentucky players have looks of disbelief. Redemption for Sparks. He hits a three at the buzzer, but how 
close was it? Six and a half minutes of incredible tension. The officials reviewed the play. If Sparks' foot was on the line, game over. If not, overtime. Spartans fans chanting two, Kentucky <laughs> faithful answering three. This was like an eternity, but the officials rule it a three overtime. Spartans down, 79-75. Kelvin Torber misses the three. But later in the possession, Shannon Brown makes the three. MSU down by one. Under 10 seconds to go in overtime, tied at 81. As Abuki gets the shot off too late. And we're going to a second overtime. 84-81 MSU. Rajon Rondo in transition. A bad pass for the turnover. And MSU regaining some momentum. Just over two minutes to go. Allen Anderson. Drive to the hoop, misses the layup. Paul Davis slams it home for the follow through. MSU wins in two overtimes. Breathtaking finish. Michigan State punches the last ticket to the final four. Allen Anderson, a 90% free throw shooter, hit four foul shots in the final 12 seconds. Shannon Brown scored 24 points to lead the Spartans as a team. They shot 56% from the field with seven three pointers after halftime. So what did Tom Izzo think of the win? Well, I couldn't be prouder of this team. I, I thought it was uh, one of the great games of, I don't know about all time, but it seemed to me at all time, and I'm sure because I was in the middle of it. And you're right, it's going to go down in history as a, as a great college basketball game, but it, you know, it really hurts right now. But I'm sure these guys will appreciate it later on. Well, you figure if you give everything you have and you know, all your hard work, you know, you'll get the result that you want. And, uh, In the years I put in here, in the season that I've had, and the hard work I can't I put into the preseason in this whole season, you know, like I said, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. But one of our coaches said, um, "This is what we're here for. This is a drama," and um, you know, it then it went to another overtime, and um, you know, we just it, it was a battle on both sides, and um, you know, I don't know even if it's hit us yet, but. Uh, I'm sure it will when we get home. So Michigan State is headed to St. Louis. This is the Spartans' fourth Final Four appearance in the last seven years. They, of course, won it all back in 2000. And how's this sound on the school resume? The first team to ever beat Duke and Kentucky in the same NCAA tournament. Not bad, knocking off two college hoops giants on the way to the Final Four. And get this, the Spartans only led at the half in one of their four tournament games this year. Michigan State also becomes the fourth five seed since 85 to reach the Final Four. Click your heels, not your TVs. We're in Syracuse. Roy Williams isn't coaching Kansas anymore. Carolina, Wisconsin for a trip to the Final Four. That guy right there, that big boy, Sean Mays, the team's number one offensive option. He was great. 40-30 Carolina. They'd go up by as many as 11 in the first half. Up 11 in the first half, it's down to three, and now it's down to zero. Sharif Chambliss, three, tied it. They go to the half, all knotted up at 44. Show me that Badger pride. Second half, it's a one-point game, 72-71 in May. Big boy down low, went for 29 and 12 boards. Later in the second, under two to play. Badgers down five. Alondo Tucker's going to cut to the hoop. Mike Wilkinson's going to set a big back screen. Tucker yes. catches and flushes. Wilkinson played a terrific all-around game, and Tucker goes for 25. Rashad McCants, money. 81-75, he had 21. Wisconsin's got an answer. 37 seconds to go. Cameron Taylor hits three. The lead is down to three. Taylor at 18. Only one possession game now. 53 seconds on the clock. 52-9 to be exact. And, and a foul by Cameron Taylor. His coach didn't call for it. Taylor a little overzealous. Felton drains the first. He hit the second. In fact, he did four free throws in the final minute and scored 17. So now there's 46 seconds left. It's game's out of reach. Cameron Taylor's three doesn't find anything. And Carolina advances to the final four. 88-82 over the Badgers. The big story in this game, aside from May, was the ability of Wisconsin to hang with Carolina. Wisconsin rarely goes over 80, and they were in this one to the final buzzer. Roy Williams, he does click his heels. Even though it's not Kansas anymore, he's got a team going back to the Final Four. Tonight, when I sit back and uh, um, think about it a little more, it, it might be something special just because I did go to school at North Carolina. But uh, I tell you, um, um, University of Kansas gave me a chance. 
And uh, so there'll never be anything negative crossing my lips or brain about uh, that any place is more special. But I did go to school at North Carolina. It's an un unbelievable feeling. Uh, you know, I had to take a step back, and I went over to the side, and I just sat. It just didn't seem real. I'm so proud of these guys. I can't even put it into words again that, that what they've done with uh, some things that were presented to us earlier, as we've ta as been talked about a million times, but what they've done with this group, how they bonded together, uh, I haven't I haven't been around a team that's done what this group has done with what they've had. Hop on the Carolina Express heels, go to their first Final Four in five years. Now in 2000, they lost in the national semis to the Gators of Florida. Gators opened up a big lead, and that one then lost in the finals themselves. No shortage of history. Carolina makes its 16th Final Four appearance. Most all-time rival Duke, UCLA, tied for second. They've been there 14 times each. And this will be Roy's fifth Final Four appearance, tied for sixth all-time with, among others, Rick Pitino. Williams still looking for that first title.